Morning. But in feet first. Uh, Smoothie has asked me if I do a, uh, a woodland scene. Well, I have done lots of woodland scenes of various degrees, acrylics. But the difficulty in doing a woodland see, scene with wet in wet is that um, it's, it's, it's uh, difficult to do trees like silver birches unless you mask out with fluid, with masking fluid, which rather defeats the object. So I only do impressions, uh, or try, try to create an impression of a woodland scene with depth and atmosphere rather than portraits of individual trees. And I'm not really going to change my style and do portraits of trees. I, I, I save those for the acrylics when I get around to doing, doing them again. I'm quite happy doing the oils, uh, the watercolours at the moment. So a woodland scene, uh, a design. If I go low, it gives a lot of forest to do and a, and a small sky in the background. If I go high, I can probably show an undulating shape in, in, in the woodland with a stream going through it, which adds a bit of a, 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 a an interest, a bit of a waterfall or a type of thing. So I've been thinking about what to do. I, I'll make it up as I go along, really. But but I'll, but in this case, I'll I'll do some sort of drawing, just as a, a memoir to the to the rest of the painting. So we just start with. bit of a bank of trees and rocky stuff, a, a stream coming down here, off centre and we'll come up here, something like that. And then we'll have some banks coming and some rocks in, in here, which I like doing with the plastic card. Nobody's complaining about about the technique, so I presume you're you're all enjoying what I'm doing with the plastic card. It sure beats uh, painting them in with a brush. Uh, but the, uh, the the trees, so we won't put all the trees coming coming on this top edge here, although there will be some. But we'll have some coming coming up up here with. Uh, some leaves on and sorry they can be coming off there really off the off the base of the painting and we can come up there and then we'll put some trees in at the background so we can have some fainter trees coming up here figure maybe and just keep that bit light maybe a fishing rod although he's fishing on the land there isn't he anyway so paint uh, lemon yellow raw sienna alizarin crimson light red ultramarine burnt umber paint grey and raw sienna uh, burnt sienna two inch hake uh, Maria came up with a good idea. If if it streaks in the sky, just go over the streakiness while it's wet with a with a dry hake. Well, I've got several look. Various stages of being worn out. So uh, there we are. Uh, the paper is Fabriano, 130 pounds. Somebody asked me that. I I say it on most of the the videos, so I can only suggest that if you're watching this, pay attention to what I say about the materials, then you won't have to post. I'm not being patronising, but I, I try to remember to describe my palette and the paper and the brush. The two inch Ron Ranson Hake, the 130 pound weight Fabriano, 15 inches by 11, 28 centimetres by 38. I buy them blocks of 100 from Art Discount, Grantham's. It's, it's a very convenient pack, package. It's very, very good for this type of work. If I wanted to do um, more, well, not wet in wet, I would use a heavier paper. 
but I but I've got used to this. I've I've probably bought seven packages. I've probably bought seven, eight hundred, eight hundred sheets of this over the last two years. So uh, there we are. The paints are twenty-one milliliter tubes of Winsor and Newton Cotsman student quality paints, kept from the cheapest supplier that I come across online. All my stuff I buy online now because I don't have to go hunting for it, I can get exactly what I want and I can check for the keen prices. I'm sorry for the art shops that are going out of business but unless they've got an online business themselves and they compete like they do with insurances and all sorts of other things, they'll go out of business because we, this is how we play. Right, okay, so maybe I'll give my board a bit of a wash, get some of the old dark water, uh, watercolour, dried watercolour off of it. Now you'll find that the paper will expand as the water soaks into it. And then we'll uh, put a wash of, uh, well, that's just a bit of lemon yellow. Let's have a nice background of lemon yellow. It's a bit creamy. Bit of red, maybe. Bit of orangey. So we try to get in a bit of mystery, bit of je ne sais quoi. Right. Uh, I don't want to overwhelm the background with with a cloudy sky, so just a bit of bit of blue. It's a little bit muddy now, but I'll a bit of alizarin crimson, bit of bit of blue. Oh, this is going to try Maria's. No, that's all it does is just takes off the uh, the paint. So I thought I'd give that a miss. Thanks for the suggestion, Maria. I've just tried it. So we don't want two sides symmetrical. We want to uh, create an impression of, well, we don't want to repeat on, on one side what we got on the other side because that would just produce a lot of monotony. Keep away from my little figure there. Uh, right, now I'll get some colour in there. A load of colour. Bit of burnt sienna. Bit of, bit of red, bit of blue. Same over here. Nice warm colours as well, as well as the cooler colours. And just a nice bit of blue in the back there. And then we'll, we'll just put in some, whoops, don't like that. Uh, these are the background trees, you know what I mean about um, the impression. These are trunks catching the light. I'm overdoing it, but for the purpose of the demonstration, right, let that dry for a little bit. I'll put in some nice foreground colours. So blue, sienna.
Just mix the colours, all the colours on your brush, various bits of the brush. So I've got burnt sienna, lemon yellow, raw sienna, bit of blue. It's, it's a void of monotony. Now, as you come towards the foreground, we can put in some darker. I'm not using Payne's grey. Try to, um, well, you, you use what paints you want. I, I've only got my suggested palette. So a nice, nice greeny colour here. And I'll put some rocks in. I guess some harder stuff up here. I know the, the brush is spitting, but it's, it has a bit of a life of its own. But it does give some interesting effects. Now let's just put in some, some rocks to justify the tumbling stream. Just put some in the background here. Don't want too many, too many, but it's a woodland floor with that stream going through it. Right, let's do the same on the other side. A bit of get a nice bit of, bit of blue in here, a bit of burnt sienna. My favourite combination of colours. I can put in some greeny stuff on the top of here. Just show some bit of foliage. Here. So I'm just using the burnt sienna, ultramarine, and a bit of uh, burnt sienna, lemon yellow, and ultramarine. You can also use red instead of the, uh, the burnt sienna. All just part of the texture in there. <coughs> oh, I forgot my cup of tea. Oh, 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 oh. If you're a beginner and you're finding this difficult to do, just stay with it. Don't give up. It's the debris of struggle, as uh, Arthur Madison used to say. It's a uh, you have to learn to do these things by practice. It's it's not a God-given talent. Well, mine isn't. It's it comes at a at the price of years and years of of doing it, failing and not giving up until you can do it. It's worth all the effort. Now we want some darker, warmer stuff in here. The red with that. So let's just get the dark bits in for the rocks. This is good practice for me doing uh, tumbling stream, finding ways to, sh to show moving water. But don't be afraid of looking at other artists, uh, ways they solve the problems of tumbling rocks. We all learn by copying. Nothing wrong with it at all. As long as you don't copy slavery and put your signature, uh, the artist's signature on, that's not a good idea because you get done for copyright. Oh, let's get some dark in there. It's all creating the impression of 
lots of foliage and things that you would find in a woodland scene. Now it's a nice dark now. Shadow areas. Okay. <coughs> Get the old card. See what happens when you scrape the paint out, it forms this dark shadow area. Gonna to try to make it look spontaneous. But we don't want to put too much of this in because it will look a bit mannered. But that'll do, and then we can just do some, some of this. So we've got that darker than that side, but we'll all soon as that. We'll uh, right there we are. So that seems. Okay, it's a bit dark in there. Right, now I'm going to put in some, some trees. I'll start with the background, I think. Um, now, a good colour is um, raw sienna and, and the yellow. Put in now we're we'll, we'll going through some bit blue. Oops, that's where I've got to put my figure. I'll have to leave a space in the, in the middle there. Just... There's some thicker ones in there. Whoops. Just to give an impression of of trees in the background. Now I can put the leaves over this. I'll get some more colours catching the light on the trunks. I saw I put some uh, meat on the bones there. Put the darker ones in as well. well I'll put some meat on in a minute. I just want to put in some of this distance. It's all gently building up. That I don't like. That's gone a bit wrong there. Let's reclip the paper. 
Right, okay. So we'll put in some some leaves. Could be a spring day. It's certainly a taste of spring today in London. Some darker ones on there. I'm missing a bit of lizard in. It. I'll put some evergreens in there to cover up stuff like that. I think. Okay, so that's that's the distant tree put it, or foliage put in. With this one coming off the top here. It's just a, a, a way of doing foliage without actually painting every single leaf or twig. Let's just get this in here. All right, let's put in a bit of a bit of green. Let's put in some darker greens here and there. I'm using just burnt sienna. Blue and the yellow. Okay, we've got bigger trees to put in the front there. Um, do some more on the left hand side, I won't be answering that phone call. Right, okay, so that's so that's that. Now we need to bring in some trees lower down here now. So they need to be warm, greeny. So Persiana, Ultramarine, and, and Lemon Yellow. Persiana, Ultramarine, and Lemon Yellow. So we'll look. Uh, We'll get uh, Just a bit of dark shadow on some of this.
Okay, we'll, uh, we'll embellish that with some rigor work and we'll let's put this I'll anchor this, these trees in, into the landscape So that will give us, hopefully, it will give a shape to the land in this wood. I will just bring a few scrapings out of, out of there. What you can do is uh, use your car to scraping some bit of light. I sometimes forget to do this. It just gives a bit of bit of texture to the to the thing. Right now we want to put in some some leaves on there. Now the, having said what I said about all the shorthand way of doing this. Dry, dry the brush on a bit of dry cloth or a swig of tea. And just break the brush up on your cloth. And then I'll go to put on some water on it now. On the palette, right? Okay. Re redry. So we've got lots of little points. So we'll have the blue. And we can just put in a few. Just keep the leaves more or less to the top, so you've got a bit of a canopy coming across there. Otherwise, we're, we don't want to obliterate what's in the middle distance there. So we just have this coming across here. And we'll just frame a nice points of dark in there. Right, that'll do for that. Now we've got to fathom out the uh, the water. And then the little figure is going to be there, I think. Right. Uh, so we'll have the, the background colour, bit of bit of red, bit of bit of blue. Right, let's uh, so we'll have a bit of burnt sienna for the cloth uh, for the figure. So let's uh, put in.
Now I can't imagine that there would be any reflection under here, but, but there'll be a shadow cast, so. Just try that off, hold on. The, the, the figure's got to be in scale. I just want to take a little bit of it out of the face here. I've got to go backwards, so I'll just... Right, that's a bit better. Right, let's uh There. <coughs> right, okay, I can't do much more than that, I don't think. I'm not going to put any. No, yes, I will. Yes, I will. I will do a bit of rigor work in the tree, trees, just a bit of a dark colour, just. Well, I'll sign it. We'll see what it looks like in the in the mount. My figure's a little bit weak as a, as a bit of a fisherman. I've foreshortened the rod so the line is coming down here. Um, let's uh, have a close up of it. All right, okay, so if I zoom you in, I want to take you to the middle distance really where all the action is. You see what I've done there? I've just made it look as if. There's a lot of stuff going on there, a lot of foliage, a lot of growth, undergrowth. I probably could have made a bit more of it there, but well, that branch is in the way now, so I can't uh, come across to there. Then we go down to the, the rocky bits. We go across here. It's as simple as, simply as I could do the water. I'm still really learning how to do that in uh, watercolour without copying anything. 
But you, if you're a beginner, you need to copy. So copy, copy this. Copy what I do. That way you'll learn, and you will develop your own signature. My painting looks like my painting. It doesn't look like anybody else's. It used to. It used to look like um, Sego, Edward Sego, or Edward Wesson, or Roland Hilda. But over the period, you will develop your own language, your own painting language. Well, let's come out of that. Oh, there we are. See you later. Bye-bye.